In today's show, I'm going to be here talking position tiers with the one and only Matt Smith of Basketball Monster. We're looking at the point guards today, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Position tiers are back. Myself and Matt, and Matt's going to come on in a second. He'll explain what position tiers are and how we're using them. But we are going to be looking at the point guards today. No point me mucking around anymore. Let's bring the man in and let's chat some. Uh, let's chat point guards. All right, so let's bring him in. Matt Smith is here with me. Matt. Ah, oh, Smitty. It's that time of year again. We are in September. We are getting ready for fantasy basketball season, the NBA season, fantasy basketball drafting season. So therefore, we're going to talk position tiers. And if you are new to this podcast or this YouTube channel and you have no idea what I'm talking about, Matt, this is a a yearly tradition. Take the floor and tell us what the hell we're talking about. It is. Thank you, Josh. I'm good to be back on. So yeah, each year for the past few years, we've done a positional tiers podcast series. You can find these over on basketballmonster.com as well. So basically, we're trying to um, group players of similar overall value, um, and that being a player's standard league eight cat value in your projections. Now, these projections were done, uh, what, a few weeks ago now or even a month ago. Yep. Um, so they have slightly adjusted between um, yeah when we first opened and now, and they'll continue to adjust as we head in towards the season. Um, but yeah, this is initially their first round of projections that you've done, Josh. So, yeah, like I said, we're just trying to um, group players of similar overall value and see where they fall. And that gives us a little bit of an idea of positional and categorical scarcity as well throughout the draft. So um, hopefully it's a really good tool for you guys to, um, yeah, look at and learn from going into your drafts this season. It's important to note also that, yeah, tier two does not mean round two. Tier four does not mean round four, doesn't mean anything along those lines whatsoever. And just because a player is put into the same tier as another player, it doesn't mean that they provide the same stats. One might be a poor field goal guy, might one might be a poor blocks guy, or poor stick, whatever it is. It doesn't mean that they provide the same numbers. It's just they're in that same sort of area. So when you're drafting, they're going to be in that same area. But as always, it depends on what you've done earlier in the draft, you know, what your team looks like, what categories you're looking for, and you're choosing between those guys in that area. It's just sort of grouping them together. And you also get an idea of how quickly things and how quickly players can come off the board and where you need to attack certain positions and certain stats and, and all of that sort of of stuff. So, Matt, let's go in and let's talk about tier one. For doing point guards, I don't know if I ever mentioned that, but if you are watching, you can see that on the screen. But let's talk point guards. Let's talk tier one point guard and let's talk about the only bloke that sits there. Yeah, of course, it's Steph Curry. So he's coming off one of his best seasons last year with career highs in points and threes. Um, he'll be a, a top five player again this season. I think he's the pretty much the, the number two um, player behind Nikola Jokic going into this season. I still... Personally, like James Harden there, and we can just discuss and debate that later on. But um, Steph Curry in for another huge season. Shouldn't have any rest risk um, that that James Harden may have. Um, so I think yeah, he's a he's an easy selection right at the top of drafts. Yeah, look, I guess the thing you look at with Curry is that the clay will return at some point and maybe that impacts him somewhat. I don't think it's a, it's a huge issue. I tend to agree with you. I probably do have Harden at two, but to me, they're fairly interchangeable overall in the draft. But if you are looking for... And guys, Harden is not on this show. We're classing him in the shooting guard tier. He, of course, is going to have dual eligibility on most sites. And if you don't see someone on this, most likely they're going to appear on another show. So don't uh, yeah, don't get too worked up if someone who you think might sh- should be in the point guard show is not in there. They'll probably appear on one of the other shows. But yeah, Steph, to me, it pretty clearly, I think, sits there at tier one by himself in that top. Uh, would you... Okay, you say you probably take Harden at two, and I agree with that. Yep. Um, would you let Curry at three, four, five? Like, he's not getting out of the top five, but would you leave him out of the top three? Right now, I do still have him at three, and we'll talk about Damian Lillard in a minute, but I do think Steph is both ahead of him, Towns, um, Giannis, Luca, whoever else you want to throw in there. But um, once again, we'll talk about 
categorical scarcity maybe a bit later on and as we work through these tiers. But the big assist boost and big advantage that James Harden does give you in assists over Curry's threes, for me, that's the kicker when uh, choosing between the two. Yeah, I might even have Giannis at three. Personally, I know that his free throws are a real problem, but if you take that out of it, uh, his numbers, you know, put it, I think he was a number three ranked player last season anyway. So I think I'd yeah, debate him and Curry at three. I don't think I'd let Curry go past four, but he yeah. is clearly in a tier of his own in tier one for point guards. And tier two, there's a bloke sitting by himself there as well. You dropped his name already, but tell us who's in tier two. Yeah, Damian Lillard. So over the past few seasons, he's really solidified himself as an elite point guard with the strong um, or and the increased points, assists, threes, and the free throw percentage. Incredibly durable as well. Um, so he doesn't come with the, the rest or injury risk that some of the others do. Um, and just the perfect building block and starting point for any team in any format as well. Yeah, look, to me, he's a, he's a pretty clear, like obviously a first round guy. I think there are eight players who sort of separate themselves. So if you're picking at pick nine, it's it's a pretty rough slot. Although in general, you'd probably just take Joel Embiid, who's not in my eight, although I always worry about him getting hurt. With you, how, how do you view that top grouping in a draft? Um, do you have the, the the eight guys sort of sitting by themselves at the top of that draft with Lillard in that? Is he in that you know, closer to five or closer to eight out of that group? How do you view that? He's closer to five to me. So currently, yeah, Jokic one, probably Harden two, Curry three. And then I think Towns and Lillard are interchangeable, probably four and five. And then after that, um, then I think there's a group of players with Kevin Durant, uh, Durant um, Giannis, Luca. Um, and then I think you can also consider Jason Tatum in there as well. So for me, the top five probably stand out. And then there's a, a nice group um, under that. Yeah, I've got you know, Jokic, Harden, Curry, Towns, Durant, Lillard, um, Giannis, and Luca in that that top eight, and then yeah, Embiid, Tatum, Beal, Paul George in the, in that next grouping after that. So to me, there is there is an eight, and there's more, but it just depends on how you want to approach it. As well, say so I'd have Giannis in the top four. You're adverse to punting, so you're not going to be taking him that high. Um, yeah, you, you're, for the similar reasons, you're, if, despite your love of him, you're not going to be taking Luca in that area of a draft either because of some of his percentage and, and steals deficiencies. So yeah, Lillard clearly sits there. In, in tier number two. Before we head on to tier number three, Matt, I do have to tell you about our sponsor because we have plenty of them at the moment and one of them is Sweatblock. It is one of the best products if you suffer from excessive sweating and you need to get out there and you don't want to be embarrassed about having big dark stains under your pits when you're out presenting in a meeting at work. No one wants that. Sweatblock's the answer. It is a clinical antiperspirant that's doctor created and doctor recommended. You wipe it on before you go to bed Wake up the next morning, you have a wash, you go to work, you go to school, and you're covered up to seven days. So only once or twice a week, you never need to put it on. That is remarkable stuff. And you can get these, which you've been able to get for a while at Amazon. They've been at CVS, but now you can get about 20% off at sweatblock.com as, you, as long as you use our promo code locked on. So get these products, which have been tested on firefighters. They've been tested all over the place. They work amazingly well. Sweatblock.com and use our promo code locked on, and you will save 20% off. Guys, it's, it might sound familiar to you as well that you have an issue with so many different services for watching TV. You've got one where you watch games live for sport. You've got another where you stream shows for TV. You, you watch your highlights on your phone. You borrow your neighbor's password for something else. It's just such so much clutter. There's a simple way to get that entertainment that you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all together in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. Get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required and content varies by package. Matt, let's go on to our tier three package for point guards. And we do have two guys in this mix. Um, tell us about who we've got sitting here in uh, tier three. Yeah, so Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, both are here in Tier 3. Um, we know Luka is just an unbelievable player, my favourite player. If you haven't, don't follow me on Twitter. Um, his below average free throw percentage can be a little bit of a concern, and that's probably why he's in that second half of the first round. Um, and Kyrie Irving, incredible per game value. We've seen that across the course of his career, but also in particular last year with the Nets. Um, I do think the Nets will look to keep him healthy this year for a deeper playoff run. Um, so that rest risk... Um, you know, could lead some people to shy away from him, which I completely understand. He also has missed a few games across the course of his season, across across the course of his career, um, which is an issue. Um, so I think personally, I think Luca should be drafted before Kyrie, um, and those sort of eight to ten extra games 
um, could be the difference. And then, you know, you can um, toggle between per game value and, and total value as well. Um, and then that's where I think re- Luca really comes out in front. Yeah, I would have Luca ahead of Kyrie, but I got a qu- I love throwing these questions at you, Matt. Where did uh, Kyrie rank on uh, total value for eight category mm-hmm. leagues last year? How many games did he play, Josh? He played 54, so he missed 18 games. Top 20? He finished 11th, if you can believe that. So despite missing 18 games, he was still a first-round player on total value. And most of that time that he missed was not due to injury. It was to do with uh, your personal reasons. And you people can have their own opinion on that. You, people know my opinion on that. Um, he suffered an ankle injury in the playoffs, but he missed those games and still was a first-round guy. He was unbelievable. I think the Nets had three guys as top six players on a per-game basis. And of course, they didn't play together a huge amount, so he's going to take a little bit of a hit. But he was awesome last year. And I do have Luka in that top eight. I've got Kyrie in that next group. And Kyrie's going to slay The difference between their ADPs and ranks is wild as well because Luka is getting drafted at pick two and pick three, and Kyrie is going at like 19 and 20 in certain situations. If I have a look at where his numbers actually lie, he's at, um, amazingly, 29 on ESPN. Kyrie, which is insane, and 19 on Yahoo, whereas Luca's going at two and three, and we have them in a very, very similar area. So while if we're basing it on this, Matt, it's probably going to be unlikely that we're getting Luca in many drafts, but we could end up with Kyrie you know, in the back end of a second round and getting a guy with similar per game production. Yeah, exactly. And like I said before, I think you can definitely have Kyrie in that next tier with Bradley Bill, Jason Tatum, Paul George, Luca Giannis, Durant, Embiid. Um, and like I said, it really just depends where you want to flick that per game value versus total value. Um, and it could depend, obviously, head to head versus uh, Roto. There's pros and cons there about how easy it is to make up for missed games. So um, completely determined by your format and settings as well. As always. All right, tier four, a few more players in this one. Um, Trey Young, Fred Van Vliet, Chris Paul, we've got sitting in this tier. Of course, they all have some different concerns. Paul, we worry about age. He hasn't been injured for the last two years, but maybe that changes. Fred Van Vliet, field goal percentage is a real problem, but he is going to have, I think he's going to be an absolute monster this year. And Trey Young took a step back last year in terms of usage with that more stacked Atlanta team, but they all sit in that probably mid to back end second round area. Would you would you take that risk on Chris Paul in the second round, despite you know, our projections having him out as like a back end second round guy? Second round, probably not. And once again, this is where his per game value falls, but I don't think his total value falls in the second round. Um, so I have seen him fall into the third and fourth round, which I think is good value if you can oh, get some amazing. stability early. I've seen him go at 40 in a draft, um, in a roto draft, which is um, incredible value. Um, I still really like Trey Young just for his elite assists. Um, yes, he took a step back last season, but... Um, once again, we know assists are the hardest category to find. So really love him in that mid middle second round and completely agree on Van Vliet as well in for a massive season. Kyle Lowry's gone um, and only Dragic and Malachi Flynn are the only other two point guards on that roster. So yeah, it'll be a big drain on your field goal percentage, but Fred Van Vliet um, will be huge again this season. Yeah, look, he probably yeah could shoot under 40% from the field, but as long as you're aware of that, you're going to get great free throws. He blocks shots at a really high level. He gets steals, he gets assists, he scores, he hits threes. He's going to put up in a punt field goal setting. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a top 10 or 12 player, to be honest. I probably, despite him being the least well-known or the least or the worst player from a basketball perspective, I probably would take him ahead of those other two in a lot of situations. Again, it depends on what I'm doing with my first round pick. I would almost undoubtedly take him ahead of Chris Paul. And the Trey Young one's interesting. But yeah, Van Vliet was awesome last year. And people will look at, oh, how bad his field goal percentage was. Even with that, he was, what, the 28th ranked player last season, despite that you know, sub-40 field goal percentage. And if you're punting that, then he's jumping into that top 20 pretty clearly. So I'm pretty excited to see what Freddie can do for this upcoming year. Tier 5, we've got one bloke sitting on his own there, um, Lamelo Ball. Matt, he was obviously great last year. When he did step into the starting lineup, his assist rate did fall off. But he still only played like 29 minutes a game last season. So we're expecting not only a second-year improvement, but a big bump in minutes for him. Yeah, exactly. And in those games where he did start, he averaged 18.6 rebounds, 6 assists, 1.7 steals, and 2.1 threes. Um, So awesome numbers. Um, He'll look to build on that again, and any improvement in his efficiency is just going to be even better. Um, If he falls into the third round, I think he's really good value there. So I'd have no trouble, um, yeah, wanting LaMelo Ball on my roster this season. Uh, ESPN's got him at 36, so that's a third-round player. Yahoo's got Mm -hmm. him at 25, so he's sort of sitting in between there. I think... 
yeah, he probably is a, an early to mid third round player. It's not outrageous to suggest that he ends the season as a top 20 player, though, mm-hmm. if he's, you know, I doubt he scores 20 points, but he could have 20 and seven with seven rebounds and two steals and yeah, hit his threes and improve some of his efficiency yeah. stuff. So it, he sits pretty clearly there. There are people who say mid third round is way too early for LaMelo Ball. I, I don't agree with that at all. He was 59th last year in 29 minutes and he is not playing 29 minutes a game. Maybe he only is the 40th best player this year, but again, the premium on assists, Matt, is is really important, and it's what does change the value based on pure just numbers alone. Yep, spot on. Tier 6, mate. Tier 6, we're looking at three guys in this group. It's his brother, Lonzo. We're talking Drew Holiday, and we've got De'Aaron Fox in that mix. I am a little... Now, Lonzo's always been a good fantasy player. I'm a little worried about how it all works with him in Chicago. Drew, I think, is absolutely rock solid. I don't think there's much upside or downside. And De'Aaron Fox really turned it on at the end of last season. But was that like a 10-game spike? Or is it what we can expect moving forward? These are all probably third to fourth round sort of players, I would guess. Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I still think De'Aaron Fox is underrated. I know his free throw um, efficiency drops him down the rankings. But his points, assist steals, field goal percentage in particular for a point guard... Um, are excellent. Like you said, had a massive run at the end of last season. So I think if you can get the Aaron Fox sort of at the end of the third round, early fourth, I think that's great value. Lonzo Ball, I'm the same. I'm just really not sure how this Chicago team is going to work out with Ball, Levine, DeRozan, Vucevic, um, how are they all going to get their their numbers and, and production. Um, and Drew Holiday, pretty safe across the board production. Um, so really good fit for both head-to-head and rotisserie leagues. Yeah, so it is going to be interesting to see how that all works out in Chicago. And if Fox, look, if Fox showed what he did or does what he did at the end of last season, then he is probably a, even an early third round player, potentially a mid third round player. But we, we'd need to see that for more than like you know, a ten game stretch that he was uh, he was putting that together for us last year. Matt, I have got a question for you. It's very important. Have you been able to get your hands on any built bars yet? No. I've been waiting a whole year, Josh. I asked you to send me some, and I'm still waiting, mate. So pay up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get you a box and get, get you some sent out of there because these are the best tasting protein bars ever. There are tremendous flavors: orange, raspberry, cookies and cream. I'll send you my favorite cookies and cream, Matt. Uh, mint brownie. There's special edition flavors, but not only do they are these delicious and they taste like a candy bar or a chocolate bar to uh, to us here in Australia, but they are also healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories per bar. Just four to five grams of sugar and four to five grams of net carbs. These are healthy. They are delicious. And you can get them for 15% off by using our code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 at built.com. Built bars are also the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. So you know that they're good because the U.S. track and field team is using it and they're a pretty good team. So go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, save 15% off, and Matt, I'll get you a box somehow. I'll get it out to you over there in Adelaide. We'll get you uh, onto the built Bars. I want you to have them. You're not going to want any other protein bar at all. Football season is just around the corner. In fact, it's right here. Pro football, college football. It is cracking off right now. And as always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. Get updated odds, props, and contests, including online's biggest half million dollar NFL mega contest and the world's largest two hundred thousand dollar NFL survivor contest. Open now at Bet Online. Also, be sure to take advantage of their opening day super promo. Make a bet on the season opener Thursday, September 9th game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose, your bet will get refunded up to $25 for new customers who sign up using the promo code NFL100. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports, from football to basketball to boxing and even your favorite Vegas casino games. Bet online is covers it all for you. Don't wait. Take advantage of all their great offers for the 2021 season. BetOnline are your online sportsbook experts. Let's go on to tier six. No, not tier six. Tier seven, Matt. Russell Westbrook, Tyrese Halliburton, D'Angelo Russell. People will look at Westbrook there and say that's ridiculous that he is that low. Why is he down in this area? Which is probably, we're talking fifth, sixth round type point guards. Yeah, and that's pretty much one big reason. That's his free throw efficiency. I mean, if he was shooting... 80% from the free throw line, then he'd be up another couple of tiers, but that really drags him down Um, and joining Anthony Davis and LeBron James there in in LA um, should have an impact on his all-round production, but points, rebounds, assists in particular. So that's the big negative on Russell Westbrook heading into another season. Tyrese Halliburton, I love. He had a unique stat stuffing ability in his rookie season already. Um, I think he can easily be a top 50 player this season. And D'Angelo Russell, 
missed a lot of games, but he's still um, only 25 years of age, so yet to hit his peak. So there's still a little bit of upside there. So if you do think D'Angelo Russell can stay healthy and have a, a good run with injuries this season, he um, he's not a sneaky little play um, there, Josh. I don't mind him. Yeah, he's fallen quite a bit as well in drafts. You can get him in the 70s and 80s in some scenarios. I'm not as convinced of his upside, but I think he'll be better than last season. Um, as for Westbrook, if you go back and look at what he did with Harden, you saw that usage drop uh, drop way off, and his assist numbers drop way off as well. And I sort of do it. Now, he's not going to have to share the ball as much in terms of passing with with uh, with Anthony Davis, but LeBron is obviously a guy who's going to have the ball in his hands. So I think the the corollary between those two situations is pretty stark. So I do expect Westbrook to see a usage and assist rate drop in LA. So he won't be putting up the same sort of things that he was doing in Washington. And then those percentages can really hurt. But if he gets the percentages back on track, then he could easily be a top 35, top 40 guy. He can easily jump ahead. Whereas I'm not sure that Russell or Halliburton have that same upside because they don't have that you know, Halliburton's deficiency is huge usage, and he's not going to get to huge usage, I don't think. And Russell's is you know, some of the health and also you know, getting enough of the ball with Towns and Edwards around. So I'm not sure that those things have that upside. Westbrook does have it, but you're banking on something we haven't seen for three years, and that's for him to become a, a solid shooter. And I don't think we should be expecting that at this point in his career. Tier 8, four blokes in here. Matt, who's in it? We have Kemba Walker, Deontay Murray, Darius Garland, and the rookie Cade Cunningham. Um... I'm staying away from Kemba. I just think him in Tom Thibodeau's system of excessive playing time, I just think it's got a recipe for disaster and it's got Ke- uh, Kemba Walker injury written all over it. Um, still like Deontay Murray heading into this season as well. Darius Garland, he's a really nice, well-rounded point guard um, and I think that's excellent value. And Cade Cunningham, his projections come out really nicely, um, super even across the board. Um, maybe a slow start like some of the rookies, but... Come the second half of the season, we'll have a big run home and could push top 50 value, I think, in in, uh, both formats or in all formats if we want to include points, sorry. All right, so we're going to talk about these four guys here. I think there are two players here who really stand out that if the end of the season we come back and they are a top 35 guys, I wouldn't be surprised. Who Mm -hmm. who would you say those two are? I think we both agree that Darius Garland. Yep. Um. Kane Cunningham wouldn't surprise me yeah, that, at that, all. That's my one. That, that's, um, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but I wouldn't be shocked. It, it could definitely happen um, if, if all goes according to plan and all goes well. So, I mean, if we're targeting these guys, what, 50, 60, roughly? Um, well, you don't have to because Garland's what, got an ADP on the ESPN at 81 and 76 on, on Yahoo. Um, Cunningham okay. is probably going to be a little bit too high, though. He's 83rd on, on Yahoo. So, again, yeah, that's, that's pretty good value. Mm-hmm. Kemba is also what he's at. Where's Kemba Walker? 79 on Yahoo. For some reason, he's ranked 32 on ESPN. So that's obviously insanity. Question, but uh, 79 is fine there. And then uh, DeJounte Murray. I think DeJounte might be a little bit higher. Now he's, he's at 61. So he, I think he, his ranks and ADPs are about right. But the yeah. other guys, I think there are some steel potential, especially for Garland. A lot of people don't seem to be massively excited about him. I'm pretty interested. I, I think that... I think Darius Garland could establish himself as the Cavs' best player this season. That might be controversial, but I think he can establish himself as that this year. Yeah, don't mind it. And, you know, if you do get a, a point guard or two early, then Darius Garland's just a beautiful second or third option to have on your roster. Um, yeah, the, the assist steals, good points. Threes are okay. Efficiency is good. So um, I really like him this season as well. Let's look at Tier 9. There is one bloke sitting here, and I think he could easily slot into Tier 8. Um yeah, it's it's really dependent on how much Miami pushes Kyle Lowry. He played an absolute shit ton in Toronto. So when you look at his numbers last year, it's like 36, 37 minutes a night. Miami's not going to do that. But what if they do? What if they play him 34 minutes a night? Then he does jump up from here. So there is a little bit of upside on, on Lowry. But he is a guy that for the last four or five years, we've always had injury concerns with him. So I guess that drops him down out of that group there. Would you consider taking him? You know, some people say it's crazy to take Lowry behind Cunningham. And, and I understand that completely. You know, in Probably if push came to shove, I would say maybe I'll leave the rookie alone and take Lowry. Yeah, how do you view that? Yeah, where he's sort of sitting here versus where you know, he might be expected to go, which is a bit higher than this. Yeah, so in the updated projections, we do have Lowry and Cunningham um, with this same overall value. So when I go back and update these tiers, Lowry will jump up into this range. Um, I think you said if he does play 34 minutes a night, then he's going to get injured. He's going to break yeah, down. True. So. 
Um, 35 years of age. He's nearly played a thousand regular season games, Josh. There's a nice stat for you. And be- hope they get a beautiful big banner for Cole Lowry to run through. Massive, for- massive. What would you put on the banner? What would you put on the banner for Cole Lowry's thousandth? Um, I'm going to try and come up with something here. As I don't know. Um, you, you're a bit of a poet. What, yeah, what let's, let's with Larry. Let's um, oh, let's think. Oh, this, it's, it's not easy, is it? I need uh, I need uh, I need some motivation here for Kyle Larry. A thousand games, you are. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. A, a thousand games for a guy that plays like a junkyard mutt. Kyle Lowry, congratulations to you and your beautiful butt. There you go. There you go. That's uh, on the spot poetry, which I'm sure you all came for. Let's go to tier 10. Ben Simmons, Terry Rogier, Ja Morant. All right, people are going to look at this and go, Ben Simmons, Ja Morant, why are they so low? Um, I personally think Simmons probably, we want to put him a little bit higher. I, I think that him going to another team will, will do nothing but help his value, to be honest. Um, and Ja Morant, I, I could make, people will make the argument that Jar should be higher than this and people will make the argument that Jar should be lower than this so that probably puts him in that right area there well Rogier, I don't think there's really any upside or downside actually there is downside because he could shoot worse than his remarkable improvement last season let's start with Simmons yep. um, the concern is obviously the lack of threes and free throws and if you are happy to punt one or two of those categories then he's jumping up significantly higher do you see any downside to him getting traded? Um I don't. The downside I see, though, if he doesn't get traded and he misses the first two months of the season because he refuses to turn up to training camp and then he refuses to play, so then what happens? That's that's the risk. Yeah, absolutely. Look, if he if he decides to to not play, which we don't really ever see in the NBA, like even James Harden here wasn't going to play, but he played and he put up really good numbers for Houston before he uh, before he was traded to Brooklyn. We just don't see this sort of thing, so that that's a risk, and that's again why I think we should be just dis- slightly discounting. And now, if we come back to this in a week's time and Simmons is being traded, then he'll probably jump up. Yeah, you know, maybe tier eight, tier seven. Like he was a guy that had top twenty punt free throw value for multiple seasons, but yeah, fell way off. And in that Philadelphia ecosystem, usage was way down. But he goes to another team, the usage comes up. He could be unbelievable, but we don't know that yet. So it's hard to put him in that area. Where's the perfect fit for his fantasy value to get back up into that range? <sighs> Shit, I, I don't know. That's that's a tough one. Um. I'd, I'd just like to see him in Toronto, to be honest. I think it'd work well in Toronto. I don't know how he gets there. I think he'd yeah. put up... I think he'd be top 20 in Toronto, to be honest. Because he's not minutes. doing that in Portland next to Dame, is he? Um, and Nurkic. Well, the thing is that there's no one that can really pass on that team. Lillard's fine as a passer. CJ's not great. Nurkic is all right. But if you play him there next to those guys, like he doesn't need 26 usage. He can have 2018 usage. Scores 16 points. Um, got the spacing around him with those guys. Uh, yeah, I don't mind him there. Um, I, I think it, I, I don't see anywhere where his value goes down. I think that's maybe Golden State, but not really. Yeah. I, I think I think he's going to put up those numbers. It's just that seem things seem so toxic for him in Philadelphia at the moment that it just seems like the absolute worst case scenario. Yep. What about John? Yeah, um, yeah I, w- I wouldn't draft him anyway. But it just it just it's a messy situation, and obviously we've still got another what six, seven weeks before the season starts or something may happen between now and then. But I think if we get to training camp and they're still not talking and um, I think it just makes it really difficult to to draft him in this in this range. And then moving on to Ja Morant, yeah, the lack of um, steals and threes um, in particular really drag his overall value down. But as I mentioned before, assists are so hard to find. So getting a guy that can average seven or eight assists in this range, I actually think it, it bumps him up a little bit and you can go around or maybe even a round and a half earlier um, if you do need those assists. Yeah, he can go in that mix with like DeJounte and Darius Garland even. Um, I think he's going to score at a pretty high rate. He was the 112th ranked player last year, Jar, in 33 minutes. And I think his ankle did impact him and he was bad at both percentages as well as steals and threes and rebounds. So really he was an assist streamer or an assist and points type of guy. Um, but yeah, if he's a top 50 player this year. I wouldn't be surprised. The problem is that Yahoo's got him at 41 and you're taking him there almost assuming best case scenario. So that, that, yeah. that makes it a little bit risky. We'll see if he falls. It seems unlikely at this point though. Let's go to tier 11. Marcus Smart, Malcolm Brogdon, Mike Conley, all with their own concerns. Brogdon and Conley with injuries. Smart with field goal percentage. But you could easily make an argument that these three guys could be end up ahead of someone like a Terry Rogier who was in that that previous tier, but they all do have their their own little warts and, and things that we need to deal with. 
Yeah, they do. And I just on Malcolm Brogdon, I mean, you look at his numbers and 20 points, five rebounds, five assists, that looks really good. Um, but then you, you delve a little bit deeper in the lack of steals and the poor shooting. Um, that can really de- drag down the player's overall value. So once again, that's how the tiers come about. Um, and yeah, Brogdon's down a little bit lower than, than people may think. Mike Connolly will turn 34 um, right around when the season starts. Um, I'll probably shy away and look for someone with a little bit more upside. He tends to slide a little bit though, Conley. Like his uh, ESPN rank is, is 69, but his ADP is 89. So when you see those two together and there's a big discrepancy, it's because people are just letting him slide. So you might be able to get him a little bit later. Yahoo's got him at, at 75 at the moment. So if he could go get into the 90s, and I think I'm okay with taking that risk there rather than... Like he was 60th on a per-game basis last year, Conley. So you're not taking him there. But if you get him at 90 and he ends up 60th and plays 65 games, it's not a bad result. I don't think to get him in that area. Tier 12, there's one bloke. This one, I'm probably going to avoid this guy. I just don't know what to expect out of John Wall. But on a per-game basis, as I um, as I just said in the show that I did with Jackson Gatlin talking about the Rockets, um, actually, no, now, um, I've, my timelines are confused. I just spoke with Jackson, but that show's not coming out till after this. So you'll get to hear it later on. Is that when he's out there, he's still going to play minutes and he's still going to have the ball in his hands. He's John Bloody Wall. Like, he's going to have the ball and he's going to get assists and he's going to get usage. The problem is, is he going to play 20 games? Is he going to play 60 games? Like, who bloody knows? And that's the tough thing with him. Yeah, exactly right. And with Kevin Porter, Jalen Green, um, some of these younger guys coming through, then, you know, come the second half of the season, and particularly when you get into fantasy playoffs, can you rely on John Wall? The answer is probably no. Oh, so, no. Um, again, I'll shy away from him and um, look for someone else. Let's run through tier 13. There's one bloke sitting in that one, Matt, and that's Devontae Graham of the uh, New Orleans Pelicans now, starting point guard. I would take him over John Wall, even if their per-game numbers come out a little bit apart. He's going to kill your field goal percentage. We know that. But he was still pretty solid last year, despite the presence of LaMelo Ball. Now he should get more minutes and uh, and more usage in New Orleans. Yeah, he had some really big games last season, and I think he's better suited for, for points or head-to-head leagues. Um, he can go big in points and threes in particular, so it can be really dangerous. And like you said, just um, will really hurt your field goal percentage, so beware in rotisserie leagues. And the last one we'll talk about here is Tier 14. We do go into Tier 15 and 16 on the website, but we won't talk about them here because this is an interesting player, and that's Spencer Dinwiddie, who sits alone in Tier 14. Now, Spencer Dinwiddie, we knew this before um, Yahoo and ESPN brought their ranks out that he would be overvalued. He's currently at 42 on ESPN. Jesus Christ, that is insane. He's 42 (laughs) on ESPN, and he's 73 on Yahoo. Dinwiddie, much like a Jar Morant, suffers from a lack of bad field goal percentage, below average free throw percentage, invisible steals, no blocks. Um, he'll score a lot. He'll get some assists and that has value. But he, at 42, it's it's actually insane to get him in that area because he just doesn't have that well-rounded fantasy profile. 42 is ridiculous. 62 would be ridiculous. 82, you can maybe make a case, but um, I think people are really going to be overvaluing Spencer Dinwiddie this season. The points and assists look good, but that's his only positive um, contributions in, in those couple of categories. So um, coming back from an ACL as well, which we don't know how that's going to shape out. Yep. No no way that I would take him yeah, anywhere near those uh, those current ranks because, again, he is a little – in points leagues, it's a little bit different. But in category leagues, we're not, uh, we're not doing that. Matt, thank you for coming on, chatting point guards with me. That is the point guard tiers. Again, leave your comments down below here on the YouTube video. You can hit Matt up on Twitter at Sman Sports and chat to him about this stuff. Matt, thank you very much for uh, for coming on and chatting about point guards with me. Thank you, Josh. And we'll do shooting guards again soon. We will uh, we'll be chatting shooting guards very, very shortly. All right, so that does it for today's show. Don't forget, follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app on YouTube. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, ring the little bell, tell your friends, you know, all of that stuff. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.